Rates are like a roller coaster ride. Up, down, up, down. It's getting annoying. Welcome back, everybody. Bula. I am live from BG. Unfortunately, no, I'm not shooting this on the beach because it would be way too loud. You would not hear anything. So I'm sitting in my beret, having a great time here. Fiji Tavarua. Look it up if you've never been here. Amazing island. So I'm going to shoot this quickly so I can get back to vacationing. Hopefully get some surf today. But anyways, that's not why you're here. My name is Kenny Simpson. This is The Brief. This is another week. And my friends, we got a lot of information and data to cover. So let's jump into it. First, as always, inventory. Last week, we were coming in a hot 2676. For active listings, this week, 2706, we've got new listings, 434. Recent, 374, pending, 460. The median sales price in San Diego is 851. So, depends on where you're at, which bracket, but prices for entry-level homes, not every state, but a lot of states, I think 60% of the state or 90% of the markets, whatever the number is, I don't have the data on me. Things are going up because there's no inventory, right? We are just locked with inventory. But let's talk about rates. Um, I would say I'm here at Tavarua with a bunch of friends in real estate, clients, friends, a lot of real estate investors, owners, and the topic of discussion is when is rates going to come down? The topic of discussion among clients that are buying home is when is rates are going to come down? The topic of discussion is when the hell are rates going to come down with everybody, right? So I think we got to go backwards here for a minute and realize that the Fed got it wrong. They obviously printed money way too much. The government, they kept rates way too long. But look, it's really, is it the rates way too long or is it the printing of all the money that's still out there causing us to continue to buy and consume, right? Because we're doing it. But we're starting to get a lot of mixed signals. You know, there was a recent article on Bloomberg where um, one of the San Francisco Fed, they're just kind of saying they're looking at data. And when you read the article, there's a lot of confusion. They're mentioning the 10 years is going to end lower around, I think, in the threes. Sorry, sorry, 3.35. We're currently over four. So there's just a lot of confusion, a lot of misinformation, a lot of data. You got to be careful about trusting the Fed and them. But unfortunately, they're in control. They're not just about you know raising and lowering rates. They're more like, where are we going? And what are they doing? So two weeks from now, we do have a meeting coming up, which is going to be important. Are they going to are they going to hold the line? Are they going to rate hike? Or are they going to stop rate hiking and saying, hey, we're at the end of the cycle. We're going to keep watching. But now because of the data coming out, we've got issues. Also, what is going on with the Fed? It's very clear that the Fed is, they didn't realize housing was going to get this trapped because that's what it is, a trap, ice age, whatever you want to call it. Nobody's selling, death, divorce, you know, the common things, you gotta move, partner split up, flight to cash is what it is. I'm hearing rumors of REO, people are hiring more. So is there gonna be REOs? Look guys, nobody knows what's gonna go on. There's always problems. There's always foreclosures, there's always short sales, there's always bankruptcies, there's always people that are, you know, having issues with money or losing their jobs, whatever it is. At the end of the day, this data has to come forward to see where we are. So we, we have to look at the data. We cannot just go off hypothetical scenarios because hypothetical scenarios have not been accurate because that's what the Fed did and look where we are. They should have started obviously cutting rates sooner. We would have had a way completely different where we didn't have to jack rates, you know, 550 basis points in over a year and a half. So that is not what we want to do. But speaking of the Feds, let's see what they do. Let's see the whole line. If they do pivot and they say that what we're thinking is they don't raise, we're going to watch the data. We think we might have raised enough. We're going to keep it here. But if we have to raise again, we will if the data changes. Or if the data changes, we might have to start bringing it back. But they're not even talking about pulling back the rates or declining of rates until next year. Remember, that rate is the prime rate. It's tied to credit cards, business lines of credit, home lines of credit. It's not necessarily tied to the 30-year fixed rate, but it's affecting it because there's the bond market, there's the spread, there's the servicers, the loan officer, the lenders, there's the banks, there's all this stuff. It's just causing a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty, and that's reflecting in the rates, right? So we don't know. But if that 10-year treasury drops down to 336, I can tell you interest rates will definitely slide and they'll come down. Maybe that spread will come with it. We could definitely see an entire point lower in interest rates. That's going to get a ton of buyers off the sideline into buying where there's just no inventory. And speaking of inventory, there's just nothing. There's no inventory. Nobody wants to sell. They've got all these low rates. It doesn't make sense whether you own apartments, whether you own two unit, three unit, house, condo. I don't care. Rates are low. You don't want to give up that payment. You don't want to give up that cash flow. I get it. Survey's kind of sitting around and waiting. And that's what I'm hearing here. Just sitting on cash, 
wait for something to happen or see what's gonna happen next. And that's the consistency I keep hearing over and over from you know investors and things like that. If you're looking to buy a home though, on the other hand is, yeah, rates are high. There's gonna be that refi opportunity, but are housing prices gonna come down? I don't know. The data doesn't support that. The data supports we're gonna have locked up supply because a lot of other reasons not just low rates. I mean, 40% of the houses are free and clear. A lot of people that live in these homes, they even might have debt on them or getting older and older. They're not gonna move. There's people that are gonna move out of that house and keep it because they got a 2.5% rate, a 2.75, a 1.875, no joke. They're just gonna keep it. They're gonna rent out of cash flow and go buy a new house because maybe they have the money to put the 10% down. So there's just so much confusion out there going on in the market. So what else is on the minds of everybody else? Jumbo loans, right? Maybe you don't get a jumbo loan, maybe it doesn't matter. But there's a, you know, there's a sector in the market, there's a clientele that need the Jumbo loan. Because of Basel 3 coming out, which started after the financial crisis, what they're going to tighten. And, you know, just to sum it up, what I think is going to happen is I don't have all the information on all of the facts and this things could change is if a bank goes and lends somebody a million dollar loan, and let's say they have to keep, you know, 10% of liquidity and with a loan, maybe, maybe they have to keep 1% or 10% or 5%, 1%, you know, uh, $10,000, 10% is $100,000. But what if they're saying, we need you to keep 20, 30% for a million dollar loan, you got to keep 20, two, three hundred thousand dollars in the bank. That's going to kill the jumbo market for banks that are a hundred billion dollars and more in assets. So, guys like me that are brokers or the small community banks, ha, remember community banks? Those ones I said that we really, really need, they can come in here, save the day. We're already hearing about it, we're talking about it. So, you got to be, you know, this is coming down the pipeline where jumbo is going to get squeezed, other financing is going to get squeezed because the government's going to come in and tighten the bolts a little bit because they just want to make sure they're trying trying to avoid some type of, you know, recession or meltdown or whatever it is. And are we going to have a recession? Who knows? If everybody says that we have one now, it's going to be mild. So like I said, so much information, so much stuff, nobody knows. Redfin came out with a study that is just kind of crazy to think about. They said one in 10 homes, one out of 10 homes is worth $1 million. So pre-2019, 4% of the homes, right? Properties, homes, whatever on the, mar on the market, just in general, not on the market, sorry, in general, were over a million dollars. Now, 2023 in August, as I shoot this, it's basically 8%, which is insane. So that's another thing is it's the banks are going to have, you know, dealing with the jumbo market. There's more jumbo loans. So just more problematic for the lending market. But hey, there's solutions. Brokers and things like that have other outlets. There's jumbo lenders coming in the game every day. They're being aggressive. They got good pricing. They got good rates. Whether you're W2, self-employed, whatever it is, you know, a lot of these guys have an answer for your need. So how do we get to 4 million homes sold a year. Well, I want to break it down because it's actually pretty cool, but I got to read it because I might mess it up. So 11,000 homes sell per day, 475 homes sell per hour. And did you know eight houses sell each minute in the US? That is crazy, 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 right? It's just, just stop and think about that, like how crazy it is. And last but not least, as I mentioned, value are up in markets. We're not, we're actually seeing the values change. Again, buyer's market 2022 Q4 starts to change from buyers to mutual market, meaning buyer and sellers are kind of getting deals and then it turned into a seller's market now. So if you're a seller, you're winning. If you're a builder, you're winning. And that's really what's going on. But besides that, guys, I'm gonna get off this video here. I hope you have a great week. I look forward to bringing some new stuff with you uh, next week. You know, lots of data, lots of stuff coming out. And remember, right, I'm on vacation. I'm in Fiji. I'm hoping to have a good time here. So I hope you guys have a good week and enjoy yourselves. And remember, I also do a podcast that's Threes and C's starting with Getting the Cash Flow Game with K&K. &K. You can find that on Apple, Spotify. We're going to be uh, dropping a new episode starting new ep uh, series three that's coming out August 21st. But otherwise, love you guys. Thanks for the support and have a great week. And I look forward to seeing you next week.